Hello, and welcome to the New Rochelle Bar Oral History Project. My name is Lori Kornbold, and I'd like to welcome Frank DeMarco and Carmelina DeMarco to be interviewed for this program. Today's date is September 17th, 2021, and we are all, all participating in the recording of this archive. So let's start the interview. Okay, uh, Frank and Carmelina, could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Frank, do you want to start? Uh, sure. Um, I was born in the Bronx. Uh, went to the usual schools. Uh, I'm very proud of, uh, to have been a student at Bronx High School of Science. And I got my uh, legal education at the New York Law School in Manhattan. Okay. And Carmelina, would you tell us? I came background? from Italy when I was 15 years old. Uh, we settled in Maryland, Connecticut. I went to school there until I came to New York to a business school. I was in, uh, going to that school and needed a part-time job. So I, have, I interviewed in the law office in Manhattan. And the wife of the attorney was working there and she said, I, I, first I said to her, this is too far from the, drive, uh, from the um, uh, station. I can't walk this far. And she says, oh no, you, you got off at the wrong uh, station. We're much closer. Besides, we have a nice Italian uh, guy who's going to law school. It's his last year. We want you to meet him. And the so, rest is history. Right. Yes. <laughs> uh, Frank, uh, what made you decide to go to law school? I was always interested in uh, law enforcement. I, uh, my brother was a police officer. I have cousins and uh, other relatives in the force. And at the time, the FBI was taking only lawyers. I figured that was perfect. Uh, my uh, Efren Zimbalist, uh, Zimbalist Jr. was my hero. He was on that, the FBI program. Uh, and then as I was going to law school, that, that sort of changed. I, I see being a law enforcement is not as much fun as being an, an attorney and in the practice of law. So I changed my, my ways of thinking and graduated in uh, 1970, passed the bar first time around and was admitted in uh, 1971. So I'm 50 years now uh, in the practice. Frank, can you tell us about your current practice and also where you practice? Uh, well, currently I practice uh, in New Rochelle uh, my practice has been here since uh, 1987. Before that, I was in Manhattan for about 15 years. Uh, practice itself is uh, general, uh, but no litigation. I used to litigate in many, many uh, times in Manhattan, and sometimes in, when I came up here with my practice. Uh, that's basically what I do now. You know, I'm trying to slow down because you, know, you get tired after a while. <laughs> 50 years is a long time. Um, Carmelina, how long have you both been working together? Since we first met. <laughs> 1969. And uh, yes. <clears throat> what areas of law do you specialize in, Frank? Uh, well, I do a lot of real estate, uh, business transactions. Uh, real estate includes co-ops, condominiums, uh, and I'm doing a lot of uh, uh, wills and estates. But again, to the point of where there's no litigation. Frank, can you tell us about your involvement in the New Rochelle Bar Association? How long have you been involved and what you've been doing since? I, I would guess that I joined the Bar Association when I first moved to New Rochelle, which would have been in 1974, so the mid-later uh, 70s. And I've been a member ever since. Mm -hmm. uh, currently, the, pre the uh, treasurer since what, what year uh, did you become treasurer? I ready? started as treasurer in 1997, and then after about 19, 20 years, I, I got out, and a few other people tried the job, as everybody seems to know, and they all left right away. <laughs> Not as easy as they thought. And I came back, uh, I think, in 2017, 2018, and I'm still now the treasurer. Um, Carmelina, can you tell us about your involvement with the New Rochelle Bar Association? Because you're such a strong team. Well, um, Frank doesn't like the computer, so I'm on the computer all day long. And you can't be a treasurer nowadays without um, a computer, so I'm the assistant treasurer. 
Officially, yes. Yes. And it's it's kind of easy because for me because when people call, he doesn't have to get on the phone. I know what's going on, so I can answer them. It works well. Um, can you each tell us uh, individually the, the, some of the local lawyers in your area that you deal with? By name? or Because um, we deal with pretty much everybody. Uh, we've made a lot of friends. Uh, makes it easier in the practice of law when you know who you're either up against, although it's not an adversary proceeding. Uh, and uh, I go back. I ha when I was working in Manhattan, I had uh, a practice at my house in New Rochelle. We've been in New Rochelle since uh, 1971. Uh, and you know, just you just get to meet everybody, certain things. When I was doing litigation, I met them in the court. When now that I'm doing the uh, non-litigation, uh, I meet them in offices, conferences, you know. Uh, I go back to uh, Campbell, uh, I forget, Bert Campbell, I think he had an office there. Uh, and all the other old timers. Uh, right now, I can't think of their names because it's been so long. Uh, but currently, you know, everybody I, we, we meet, uh, this is really uh, very helpful. It makes life easier. Uh, practicing law is sometimes can be pretty tough. Carmelita, I'm sure you know the same attorneys. And yes, and 90% um, of the times when they write to us, it's always Frank and Carmelita, the team. <laughs> They never say, you know, Frank, call me, no, Frank or Carmelina, call me. Yes, Carmelina, you're very well connected in New Rochelle. Do you want to tell us some of the organizations and activities you're involved with? Oh, let's see. Outside the bar? We are uh, involved with our church, Blessed Sacrament. We are involved with our uh, residence park. Um, Frank is the treasurer. Uh, neighborhood Association. Yes, but, um, I'm on the board. I'm on the board of Solution High School since 1990. Um, I was president of the Parents Guild for four years. Um, now I'm, I'm on the board. Uh, let's see. They found you. <laughs> uh, what else? Uh, um, uh, what else have we? Uh, well, we were involved with the Calabria Society for many, many years. Uh, oh, yes. And I'm song involved with the Song Catchers. That's the organization that uh, gives lessons for music, singing, uh, instruments uh, at a very low cost, you know, for the for locals who cannot afford, uh, which uh, could be sometimes very expensive uh, fees for these lessons. Well, we were involved with Song Catchers from when our kids were in grade school since. My son was in kindergarten, he's 49 years old now. Um, we helped do fundraisers and they used to come to our house and have uh, uh, caroling every December. We had 30 kids and 20 parents there and 30 pizzas. The Library Foundation? You were involved well, with that? I helped with the, yes, the 100th anniversary of the library. Yeah, we Whatever was going on in the Rochelle, somehow we got involved with. Uh, Frank, can you tell us about which courts you practice in and if you have any interesting stories with members of the bar or appearing in front of the courts? Well, practicing in courts now, it's, it's not you know, going for trials or litigation. Okay. But I've been in the, the Supreme Courts of pretty much all the uh, local counties, uh, Nassau, Suffolk, uh, Westchester, New York City, uh, surrogates court. I deal, uh, you know, with surrogates court now because of uh, my practice with wills and estates. Uh, I was a small claims arbitrator for for many years. I haven't gotten involved the last couple of years because of the COVID, and now they're doing it a little bit different. So I kind of backed out of that. But you know, at least thirty years as an arbitrator. I have one final question. Um, what, since you've been a both been long-term members of the bar, what changes have you seen in the New Rochelle Bar Association over the years? Well, as treasurer, I see that the membership has gone down yeah. greatly. Uh, and I think that's a problem with most organizations. Uh, but 
with the Louis Vuitton Bar Association, even though the numbers are down, the activities really have not changed very much. Obviously now we're not doing too much on the outside with the face-to-face -face, uh, meetings, uh, but we're still involved with a lot of things. And with the less members, it doesn't make that much difference. We still draw other people into our events. But years ago, we used to have a meeting every month at different restaurants. We used to have uh, five or six uh, tables of lawyers. And I remember we used to have to get up and introduce ourselves. I, I hated that. <laughs> Many times I used to say, I'm Sophia Lauren. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm sure there was a, a change from the activities to where the focus became the continuing legal education classes. Did you call yes. yes, absolutely. The association yes. is very high up on the list with uh, giving CLEs at no cost, and uh, we've been very successful. Yeah. Let me ask one question, Carmelina. In addition to helping Frank as a treasurer or being the treasurer, You've been involved in other things for the Bar Association, dinner parties and events. Can you explain a little bit how you got involved and what you do there? Oh, I like to plan parties. <laughs> so that's why I got involved. Um, yes, I like to plan things, yes. So um, I get reservations. I go visit the uh, halls to see which one of them gives us the best deal. Um, and then night parties or quarter of the Oh, yes, we. And, uh, so I, before the COVID, we used to have a lot of functions. Yeah, Court of Appeals, uh, uh, the Christmas party, well, not Christmas, a holiday party. Uh, the boat ride. The boat ride in June, yes. Picnic when there's no boat ride. It's, uh, yeah. Well, thank we you hope very to get much. back to it very soon. Okay, we thank you very much for being part of this archive, and uh, hopefully there'll be more than one viewer that watches the Bar Association. We've got at least two. <laughs> at least two. Thank you very much.